Nuclear Artist from My Sin PLJ Nano Capsule. Uh, strategy target intracellular, yeah, Staphylococcus uh, or Mycobacterium by Christiane de Sousa Cavalho Odarts from Deutschland, Saarbrücken. Yeah, good afternoon, everyone. It's a pleasure to be here and share our data that we have uh, at Helmholtz Institute for Pharmaceutical Research in the drug delivery group. I will be showing uh, today uh, a piece of data that we have with a nanoformulation aiming for intracellular infection, to target intracellular bacteria. And these are the pathogens that we are addressing, Staphylococcus aureus and Mycobacterium abscessus. Why these pathogens? Because in the context of cystic fibrosis, lung infection, they are really uh, important pathogens. Uh, since this uh, disease is really polymicrobial, it's a challenge to treat patients because you are dealing with not only one pathogen, but several of them, including fungi and bacteria. And uh, of course, the bacteria, they have strategies to live in the host. In CNCF patients, the most common is biofilm formation, but when they get inside the cells, they become intracellular. And this is a real barrier for either antibiotic or anti-infective. Uh, in case of Staphylococcus aureus and Mycobacterium abscessus, they do build a biofilm, but they also become intracellular. And when they are inside the cells, they really manipulate the, uh, dige the digested system that we have. So, in case of staph, they do proliferate it inside a acidic compartment. And they stay there for several days, they escape afterwards, and they infect new cells. For mycobacterium abscessus, not. They are in a phagosome that is likely mature, but not completely mature. And with this strategy to live inside the cells, they do escape host cell mechanisms, and these bring antibiotic resistance because you need more drugs to reach them, uh, and most of the case, intracellular persistence. And then, coming to the questions, do we need nanomedicine? We do believe that with nanomedicine, we can really approach this and bring the drug inside the pathogen, or reach better intracellular pathogens if you bring uh, carrier together, yeah? Uh, and why do we have, do we choose, uh, sorry, uh, why did you uh, choose claritromycin? Claritromycin, it's, a, it's an antibiotic, it's a macrolide, you usually use it in the clinical for CF treatment, and this, besides the, the, the anti-inflammatory uh, activity that is really important in the context of uh, CF disease, they do have uh, antimicrobial activity that is really broad, so therefore it's, it's, a, it's a good candidate to bring the drugs uh, against these two pathogens. Uh, just an example to show you that this is a frontline antibiotics against uh, CF lung infection, and you see here for staph, we have claritromycin and for abscessus as well. Of course, we cannot forget the drawbacks that macrolides have. Usually we have oral administration, and these lead to a systemic effect and less, eff eff uh, less efficacy of the drug, yeah? Uh, alternative that we thought uh, at uh, Helmholtz, let's put this drug in a carrier, then try to bring more drug to the site of infection. And these we want to deliver via aerosol, yeah, that we can reach the, the infection site in the lung. So, which method are we using? We are using uh, PLJ nanoparticles, using a method called interface on the position of preformed polymer. That's an interesting method because it's one step process, it's uh, really reproducible, and we obtain uh, monodispersal nanoparticles. Besides, we are able to, do, to have a high uh, drug load and 
as I said, we were also able to do aerosol deposition. So how these particles look like? We have developed two kinds of particles. One coated with chitosan, that's a positive uh, polysaccharide, uh, with the aim to reach better the cell membrane and also the bacteria. And we have also uh, non-charged uh, particles. And the particles are around 120 nanometers. And just to give an example here, that's 68% of uh, drug encapsulation. Uh, when we look at the release profile of clarithromycin, it uh, looks quite good because we have a sustaining uh, drug re release uh, up to 24 hours. So 70% of clarithromycin was released uh, after 24 hours, what's good? And was no, that was no difference between the formulations in terms of release profile. Uh, of course, we needed to ask whether these formulations are biocompatible, and they do. They are against, uh, when we try, uh, try with uh, lung cells, uh, A549 or uh, KLU3, there's a bronchial cell and macrophage. Uh, there is no uh, toxicity uh, with three concentrations that we have used. And then we started to ask where these particles are interacting when we have, uh, for example, an airway bronchial cell model or when we are addressing here uh, the, the deep lung, mainly macrophage. For the uh, uh, upper airway, we have used a device from vitro cells to deposit the particles as aerosol. For that, we use a Kalu tree uh, culture on the air interface, a liquid interface. And as you can see here, the nanoparticles are in green. They, they are not internalized. They are really bounded to the membrane, cell membrane. And they don't get inside. Nevertheless, when you look at the transport of drug, drug across the barrier, we do have um, a higher transport when we see the coated, uh, chitosan coated particle compared with free drug after 24 hours here. Despite of that, the barrier property, it's, uh, it's uh, not changed. So we don't have a barrier disruption when you have this transport. What's good? Then we start to look at the macrophage using a uh, a model of a macrophage is a mouse macrophage, raw cells. And we uh, did the uptake as well. And you can see here that we have a high uptake inside the, the macrophage. And here it's the, the channel for lysotrach red that's uh, labeled lysosome. So m most of the, the particles, they are internalized and they are colocalized with lysosome. They end up in this environment. And we asked, it, well, let's quantify them, uh, the uptake and the association with lysosome for each of these particles. And you can see here this quantification was done using image J. And as we can see, nanoparticle uptake was higher for chitosan one, chitosan coated, compared to uncoated. And uh, when we see the, the lysosome interaction, you can see that the chitosan one is also more uh, co-localized with lysosome than the other one. And then the question is, well, do these particles, when they end up in lysosome, they do still something against intracellular bacteria? Yeah, they do. You see here the CFU assay against, uh, uh, for Staphylococcus aureus intracellular, that's a macrophage infection. And what we did here, we, we tried to mimic the, the the clearance that we have in the lung. We did the infection, and then after two hours, we applied the drug or the, the formulations, and we wash out after two hours. So after two hours, we keep fresh medium until 18 hours, and what was uptake for the cells by the macrophage nanoparticle in this case was already active against the Staphylococcus aureus, as you can see by the three logs reduction here in the CFU compared to the free clarithromycin or with the control, untreated one. And this is uh, happening because when we, quant when we quantify the association of nanoparticle with intracellular staphylococcus aureus, 
we could see that the Kytos encoded one has more association than the encoded one. So this might explain why we have also a better result here in terms of killing with Kytos encoded. Uh, it's, it's already described that for some groups that, as, and as I mentioned also at the, uh, the beginning, that stuff, they really proliferate inside the phagosome. And not only macrophage, but in the dendritic cells as well. Then we, we ask it what it happens after treatment with clarithromycin, a nanoparticle then. Uh, we had a look at the lysosome uh, staining as well. And you see here the staph and nanoparticles. We can see that indeed the treatment uh, makes that the staphylococcus is not interacting with lysosomes anymore, decreases this association. Yeah? Whether they are escaping to the cytosol, I cannot tell now. I don't have this data. But if there is something going on here that is somehow protecting uh, or actually uh, disrupting the, the, the normal cycle that st uh, staph has intracellular. And then uh, we ask, uh, what about mycobacterium abscessus? Maybe I, I take uh, some seconds to explain you about this bacteria. That's a known tuberculosis mycobacteria that is, is found in the water, in the environment. And the trick thing with this uh, pathogen is that when cystic fibrosis patients get infected with them, they are really in trouble because there is no uh, effective treatment. Even drugs used against the TB are not working against this pathogen. And another uh, important point is that inside the patient, this bacteria can change the morphotype. And one, it's more biofilm form, another, it's more intracellular. Therefore, when we think about, let's see, let's treat some uh, drugs against this pathogen, you need to address both, and not only one morphotype. And uh, as I said, claritromycin is already working against these mycobacteria, but cannot be inhaled. So our formulation with chitosan claritromycin was effective against the mycobacteria, both uh, morphotypes, and even the, the, the intracellular one, it uh, was even better, a little bit better than the free claritromycin. With that, I come to the end, and I hope I could show you that the encapsulation of claritromycin did not interfere with the drug activity. And uh, these particles could be uh, administrated as aerosol. And also that we could uh, have antimicrobial effect against the Staphylococcus aureus and Mycobacterium abscessus, what brings me to a perspective that these nanoparticles could really be a promising strategy to target co-infection. When you have this scenario in CF patients, uh, that would be really uh, something that we could keep in mind. And uh, I would like to acknowledge the people involved oops, in, the, in this work, all the collaborators, Amelia Francesco, who was a postdoc in, in our team, and he was the responsible to develop this formulation. Uh, Adriele did a master in the mycobacterium uh, results, and uh, you for your attention. And I'm happy to take questions. Oh, uh, question, please. And while uh, preparing the audience to, uh, to take the question, so, so you, uh, your kind of a, a formulation is can be de delivered via aerosol. Yeah. So far, you did not Sorry? try. What I mean is just, to, did you try the aerosol? Uh, is it can be treated or they could be? No, uh, we had the results with mm -hmm. the KLU3, for yeah. example. We have aerosol deposition. We did aerosol yeah. deposition. And we saw mm -hmm. that these particles okay. don't change the, the property and you can deliver it. The second one is just a uh, PLJ containing clarithromycin was delivered via aerosol to the, uh, the region of interest, and then it stays there upon the surface of the cells, and, uh, and it is going to release slowly clarithromycin in local milieu. So because of the concentration gradient, that those clarithromycins are going to be internalized to, the, to kill this uh, Staphylococcus or mycobacterium. Yes. Uh, is my understanding correct? Yes, that we could 
uh, bring this particle. I cannot tell you the concentration that is locally delivery, mm -hmm. but by this release, in vitro, the in vitro release that we saw, uh, is, there is a range like 70%. Mm -hmm. And might be that we really succeeded to bring more mm -hmm. drug when we bring with nanoparticles than when we give in solution yeah. in case of clarithromycin. So, is there any questions? carbon nanodots to bring the stuff inside the cells. No, not really, but it's a good you idea should, to think you about. Should, because they are really good, very small, they enter the cells very easy, they are non-toxic, and you can conjugate stuff to them, and they can lose it in the cell, very good. Ah, great. Thank you for the suggestion. Okay, thank you. Thank you, thank you again.